All right, everybody, hail and welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse, and I'm the host here on this channel. This is your first time coming. Thank you so much for supporting. Be sure to click the subscribe button down below if Norse heathenry, Norse heathenry related things are sort of your thing. Uh, click the bell for notifications so that way you're notified every time that I upload new content. And uh, today is going to be the continuation of a series that I run here on the channel. You can go to the playlist section and see all the different series that I have. This one being uh, the part of the deity discussion series where we discuss uh, the various Norse gods and goddesses. Uh, so far we've done eight videos and today is the ninth episode. We're going to be discussing Freya. Uh, so I think this is going to be one that gets a lot of feedback, at least I hope so, since Freya seems to be one that uh, a lot of folks like to um, you know, deal with or work with or, or hail quite often in uh, their daily practices. So thanks, thanks again so much for tuning in and watching. Before we get started with the discussion, there's a candle that we light and the uh, incense. Uh, so that'll be something that we'll go ahead and do right now and then we will go ahead and get into this discussion. Down in the description of the video, um, keep in mind too, there's other ways that you can support Midgard Musings. There is the Facebook page that you can become uh, you know, followers on. Go ahead and like the page, follow the page, all that fun stuff. Um, there is a uh, merchandise store through Teesprings and Redbubble. The links are down here in the description. Uh, there's also this really cool thing that you can uh, buy me a coffee. It's uh, just a monetary donation to the channel. Uh, for three dollars, you can send me a cup of coffee. Um, it's just kind of like a neat little gesture that helps support this channel. So check all that stuff down in the description of the video and support Midgard Musings in any way uh, that you can. So, here we go, talking about Freya. Um, this is going to be kind of an in-depth... We're not going to go too deep into like the history. We're going to talk a bit about her history. And then I always like to talk a little bit about what my dealings with this particular deity are. Um, if there are any, if I've had any, um, and then as well invite feedback and comments from anybody out here who does work with that particular deity. So uh, starting off with just like the history parts of uh, Freya, uh, the name is uh, Old Norse for just lady. Okay, it's more or less a title rather than a name. Uh, but she's somewhat famous or uh, her, her renown uh, tends to be uh, with her fondness for love, sex, fertility, passion, uh, things of beauty, uh, the finer material possessions. Um, so, you know, because of those things, uh, she, she's quite often a, somewhat affectionately referred to uh, by a lot of, of folks as the sort of party girl uh, of the gods. Um, and she is of the Vanir, uh, tribe of the gods. However, she is also as an adopted or, or um, honorary member of the Esir tribe, the gods, uh, the tribe of the gods with whom like Odin, Thor, Tyr, uh, those particular gods uh, specifically are uh, attested to in the lore. And uh, Freya's father is Njord, and her brother is Freyr. And if you go up here to the annotated card that you'll see up in the top right, the last deity discussion that we had was on Freyr. Uh, so check that out at your convenience as well. Uh, her mother, uh, Freya's mother, is kind of unknown, but it's generally uh, recognized that her mother is Nerthus, uh, and it, who is also Njord's sister. Um, so her husband uh, is not a whole lot talked about uh, his name, or the name of, of Freya's husband, is Older, um, which only appears in some of the later uh, Old Norse literature, stuff that's like prose and beyond. Um, so we tend to recognize that as being none other than Odin, um, especially given the fact that um, Freya has a lot of identical uh, features, in terms of what she's related to and, and stuff with Frigg, who is um, Odin's wife in the lore. And uh, you can check also the um, annotated card that appears up here uh, for the deity discussion that we did on Frigg, okay? Freya, and we're gonna get into, towards the end of the video, we're gonna get into a little bit of why or how the similarities between Frigg and Freya 
um, how we kind of have determined that and how that in some instances, in most instances, actually um, they are one and the same. Um, so Freya is the archetype of the vulva, okay, also Freya. Uh, the vulva is, or was, and is still now today, uh, the sort of professional or semi-professional practitioner of Sather. And Sather is the, I guess you could say like the most organized uh, form of Norse magic. You know, there's uh, things that the Archidans uh, from ancient times had a vulva uh, that sort of kind of traveled between the communities, between the tribes, and offered the religious services of, of you know, the, the, sort of the seer, the, the um, sorceress, that sort of thing. Um, it does, Sailor does have some very close uh, um, associations with being woman's work. Uh, it's a very feminine art. And so um, it was Freya, Freya, Freig, one and the same, so to speak, that uh, kind of brought that, that skill, that knowledge to the Aesir, specifically to Odin, who wanted to know more about it and how to practice it and how to do it. Um, and then sort of kind of by proxy, in a way, it, it came to humankind as well. Um, the... You know, given the fact that her uh, expertise in controlling and manipulating the desires, uh, health, prosperity of others, she's kind of a, one of those beings whose knowledge and power is somewhat unrivaled, especially in that aspect when it comes to this, the whole Sather workings and things, right? Um, she is known to preside over her realm in... Uh, in uh, uh, Osgard called uh, Folkvogner. Uh, Folkvogner meaning the uh, field of the folk or field of the people, um, that sort of thing. And uh, she is also uh, amongst the things that she's associated with being, you know, love, uh, fertility, passion, desire, you know, sexuality, that sort of thing. Uh, and because she's a vulva uh, or, or sort of the chief of the vulvas uh, and, and a lot of Folks who practice Seder look to her in ritual and look to her for guidance and whatnot. Um, but in addition to those things, she is also uh, associated with battle and death because she has, Folkwagner is, in the lore anyway, is the field that the first chosen of the slain go before the other half go to Valhalla. All right. Um, so in that instance, uh, or in that instance, I should say, you know, Freya is, uh, and I don't think this has anything backing in the lore per se, at least not old text, maybe some of the newer stuff. She's considered to be somewhat of the queen of the Valkyries, right? The Valkyries, or Valkyria, uh, being the uh, choosers of the slain, the ones who sort of pick the dead on the field of battle. Um, she is just considered to be sort of the, the top one uh, of the Valkyries quite often and therefore she gets the first pick. She gets to choose who come to, uh, you know, the, which of the slain come to Folkwagner and then the, the second half or the other that she didn't pick go to Odin and, and Valhalla. Um, so we see her name appear in our day of the week, or day, one of our days of the week in, in English. We have the word Friday, the, the fifth day of the week, if you count Monday as being the first day. Uh, or the sixth day of the week, if you're counting Sunday as being the first. But um, Friday in is a uh, you know Germanic language is uh, found. The root of that word is founded in an old Germanic, Proto-Germanic uh, deity called Freya. Okay, and Freya was the single goddess that is kind of the foremother of either Frigg or Freya. Uh, or both, and we can see from his, historical texts that there were no differences between two deities uh, for the uh, you know proto-Germanic tribes. They just had the one, uh, and so that's why we can s pretty much simulate that the separation of Frigg and Freya uh, in the lore uh, came way after the fact, and that there was just that one central deity of. of kind of this mother goddess, this 
this uh, chief goddess uh, in the Pantheon. So it really shouldn't come as any surprise, uh, you know, that the Norse sources that we find a little bit of kind of a confusion as to which goddess that Friday is named after, whether it's Frigg, you know, Frigga's day or Freya's day, um, but it definitely has its roots um, uh, you know, because we have you know, Frigg or Dogger, uh, these are all Germanic names, uh, Freya Dogger, these are all names that pretty much mean Frigg, Freya's day, Frigg's day, Freya's day, it's all um, cognate, you know, with that, with that old Germanic, proto-Germanic word Freya for their, for their goddess. Um, and, and again, the names of the two, Frigg and Freya, uh, are interesting in this regards that Freya, as I mentioned earlier, is simply a title. It, it just means lady, okay? Um, and it kind of, it is an, it, it's a cognate word for uh, the German word Frau, which is used much in the same way as we would call someone like a woman of a married status, uh, or an older woman, Mrs. versus Miss. Um, so we see that, uh, like for instance, Frigg is an actual word that comes from an ancient root that means beloved. You know, so it is a bit more of a, of a I guess it's, it's also a title in a sense, you know, you could be a beloved something of another, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the name, but in that sense that that word Freya is definitely cognate with, the, with these old words that just mean lady. Um, so... It definitely has, like for instance, like Frigg, uh, definitely has links to words that mean, you know, love and desire, you know, precisely the areas of life that we can, like relationships, um, sexuality, things of passion, you know, are, are the, the examples through the lore of, of Freya being sort of, like I said earlier, like the party girl or the very promiscuous type, um, Loki even sort of, uh, you know, calls her out on that in the poem Locusena. Um, where he kind of says, you know, she's going around sleeping with everybody and everything and that sort of, that sort of thing. So, um, again, go, kind of recapping a little bit, though, the things that Freya is most closely associated with or related to are things of beauty, desire, you know, sexuality, the passion, um, even war and death, uh, magic, um, and then the, the, the obvious relations to things of fertility because she, her being a Vanir God, um, first and foremost, after or before the the Asir Vanir War took place, and they were, you know, uh, Njord was taken as hostage and that sort of thing. So uh, there's a big story about that. Maybe we'll go into at a different time because that would take another however long to go over that. Um, but the Vanir gods are are usually associated with things of you know agriculture, fertility, not just of the land, but in fertility of life. In general, okay. Um, from what I've gathered, and from what I've, what limited workings I've had with with Frey, I don't really do a whole lot of, you know, hailing of her and ritual on a regular basis. Maybe in certain times of the year or in certain specific events. Um, but she has, a, she's a very strong and passionate figure, and a, and a very strong uh, and empowered goddess, you know. Um, and I feel like she is the one who can empower uh, women especially that seek her um, so it's because she is she's, she's the essence of you know sexuality and even though she's perceived as quite promiscuous in, in the ways that I mentioned earlier um, you know women that open their hearts to her uh, kind of understand the the deeper meaning of her divine nature um, it's not just she's out just trying to screw everybody for no reason. There's more to it than that. Um, and, and I feel like Freya's teachings, because of that, because she has such a... It's not just what you see on the surface. There's, there's more to her than that. Uh, you know, her, her lessons and her teachings can be very deep and complex. Um, the, the, the perception or, or, or the, the view that we see of, of Freya... Uh, from the lore and her, her perceived you know promiscuity um, in, in her behavior can can be somewhat uh, a reflection I guess you say not necessarily necessarily a negative reflection but the it's like it's like a representation of, of the, the power that, that women have 
uh, and the right to choose partners uh, to, to have that you know freedom um, to kind of be in charge and control of your own desires and whatnot so there's definite uh, strength there there's definite empowerment there uh, and I feel that especially for those of the you know that have more of the feminine qualities in life that there's that Freya would be one to certainly work with and, and look to so I don't have a whole lot of, of experience working with Freya directly um, yet um, but if I ever do and when and as I do I'll be sure to share with you guys and I would love to hear what you have to say as well in your workings with Freya so if you do and uh, have anything that you want to share please feel free to go down into the comments leave us some, uh, some feedback and some thoughts um, on what it is like to work with Freya in your own individual practices. So that wraps it up for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the channel, subscribe, give the reacts, all that fun stuff, whatever it is that you can do. If you don't want to miss anything, uh, be sure to click the bell notification so that way you're notified every time that I upload new content. Uh, next week's video is going to be a really interesting one. I will share with you all sometime later in the week what the subject matter will be, but I already have it planned, so stay tuned for that. Everybody that's watching live on Facebook, stick around so that way I can uh, read your comments and get your feedback going. Everybody here on YouTube, thank you again for your support. Be sure again to check the description area for all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings. Follow and like the Facebook page, subscribe to the channel, get you some nice merchandise from the various uh, platforms that I have merchandise from on Teespring and Redbubble. Buy me a coffee every now and then if that's your thing as well. All that's down in the description. Thank you all again so much for watching. Hail, and I will see you in the next video.